How wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a potential discovery of what seems to be signs of an ancient supernova, but not just any supernova, what we usually refer to as a kilonova, an extremely powerful explosion that's normally responsible for creating some of the heaviest and some of the rarest elements in the universe. An explosion so tremendously powerful that we normally can see them from really, really far distances almost at the edges of the visible universe. And so what some of these recent papers suggest is that, well, first of all, we definitely have signs of unusual elements on our planet that might have arrived here only a few million years ago. And second of all, a typical supernova is very unlikely to create these elements. So something much more powerful must have happened somewhere in the vicinity a few million years ago. And that something could have also caused a potential extinction event on the planet. But let's start with the first discovery. So not so long ago, the scientists analyzing various deposits retrieved from the depths of our oceans, specifically at a depth of about 1.5 kilometers, discovered a few interesting elements that seem to have been deposited in several different locations in several different time frames. But what's really interesting about these particular elements is that they usually don't exist for a very long time. One of them, the isotope of iron known as Iron-60, usually has a half-life of about 2.6 million years, meaning that within only 10 million years, there really should be almost nothing left. Yet at the same time, pretty large amounts of iron-60 were discovered in these deposits. But at the same time, they also discovered a much more interesting isotope known as plutonium-244. And unlike iron, plutonium in this case requires quite a lot of different things to happen for it to form. But let's start with this periodic table, that uses color to identify how certain elements are usually created in the universe. And in a nutshell, pretty much everything up to iron here can potentially be formed inside a typical star. Given billions of years, most of these elements will usually form through various types of fission, with iron being the last on the list. But everything past iron, and especially as we get to elements right here on the bottom, will normally require something else to form them. And in this case, well, what we're talking about is of course a supernova. Normally different types of type 1 and type 2 supernova can actually produce a lot of these heavier elements. But because type 1 and type 2 supernova are not necessarily the most powerful explosions in the universe, they don't really produce everything. And so some of these heavier elements, specifically elements like plutonium, will generally require something even more powerful in order to provide them with just enough neutrons and just enough mass to create these relatively unstable isotopes like plutonium-244. And so some of these heavier elements have always been believed to be produced in what's known as kilonova. And right now, as of today, the only explanation for these kilonova events, which are usually followed by an extremely bright explosion and usually a gamma ray burst as well, is basically when two really massive, really compact objects collide. In this case, either a neutron star and a black hole, or more likely, two neutron stars. And when this event happens, this is essentially when a tremendous amount of radiation is released and a lot of neutrons start bombarding these elements, which are normally deposited as a kind of a gas cloud around these stars, eventually creating heavier and heavier elements all the way to plutonium, uranium and so on. And so today it's believed that these various kilonova that happened over the past few billions of years most likely created and deposited pretty much most of these, if not all of these, heavier elements on our planet today. But the two questions here are of course, one, have any of them happened relatively recently and somewhat close to us? And two, have any of them caused any serious disruptions, specifically cataclysmic disruptions or extinction events on our planet? Now the second question is very difficult to answer right now, mostly because we don't really know when exactly these events happened. But the other question of whether this happened nearby and in the relatively recent history, the answer to that seems to be yes. And more specifically, some of these recent papers that you can find in the description below seem to suggest that a lot of the signs in the deposits in the ocean really imply that something like this definitely happened in the near vicinity and within the last 10 million years or so, possibly even within the last 3 million years. And mostly because scientists have already identified several deposits of iron-60, the unstable iron, all of which seem to have happened in different timelines. Now normally iron-60 is produced in a typical supernova, but plutonium-244 requires something more powerful. And because the proportions of iron-60 seem to be connected to plutonium-244, 
it does sort of imply that whatever supernova brought the Iron 60 might have also been responsible for creating a lot of these plutonium-244 particles as well. And based on the half-life of these elements, this really only suggests that this happened within the last 10 million years. And this paper right here even goes a little bit farther in their analysis and sort of presents a potential answer for one of the bigger mysteries in the vicinity. The mystery being this right here, the so-called local interstellar cloud. Now we know today that we're actually sort of flying through this, as I mentioned in one of the previous videos that you can find somewhere right there. And based on this, we know that several particles have already been identified in various deposits that seem to have originated from the local interstellar cloud. Now the cloud itself is a really, really large and somewhat magnetically charged area that contains a lot of different types of plasma and a lot of different types of particles that might have been created by a powerful supernova a long time ago. Now nobody really knows when this happened and also nobody really knows if this indeed was created by a supernova, but the implications here are actually pretty interesting. What this essentially means is that this really large cloud was very likely a result of some sort of a really, really powerful kilonova that happened within the last 10 million years that created a lot of these heavier particles and heavier elements. And then some other supernova, probably smaller supernova that happened sometime in the past, possibly even the ones that created some other clouds very close to us, might have delivered some of these particles to our planet with the more recent supernova essentially sort of bringing the particles from some of the older kilonova as well. Or in other words, the implication here is that when the kilonova happened, it created so much material across such a large area that it kind of stayed in that area for a very long time and is still there today. And some of the recent supernova then sort of grabbed the materials from the leftovers here and slowly moved them toward our planet, eventually depositing them in the ocean and all over the planet. But because supernovae in general are not really a big risk to us, especially the ones that are farther away, the question here is of course, what about the kilonova? If a kilonova did happen within approximately a few hundred light years away from us, there is actually a potential risk to our planet. Some of these kilonova are known to be hundreds if not thousands of times brighter than a typical supernova and are able to produce as much energy in just one second as our sun will produce in its entire lifetime. So these are really, really powerful events. And technically they are the brightest and the most explosive events in the universe. But we currently obviously have no idea when these events happened near us. And the signs from these uh, studies do suggest that it might have happened not so long ago, simply because of the discoveries from various locations on the planet that do imply the presence of these unusual particles such as plutonium-244. But before any of this can be definitively proven, the scientists in this paper do suggest looking for some of the other potential signs of these really powerful events. If we can actually find more isotopes in those samples and discover their presence in some of the other regions as well, this could be a really, really interesting discovery because it would definitely suggest that a really powerful kilonova happened not so long ago, somewhere in the vicinity of our own sun. And what effects this had on the planet would be really interesting to investigate. But because these events are generally really rare and don't really happen that much, and also because we don't really expect any of these events to happen in the next few millions of years anywhere near us, it's really nothing for us to worry about. But it's still interesting to find out what happens to planets, and specifically planets with life, if these events happen in the vicinity. But I guess until we learn something else, that's pretty much it and pretty much all I wanted to mention. Check out the papers I mentioned in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you didn't know. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Anyway, stay wonderful, and as always, bye-bye.